Hey guys, Saw Simon here, and today I am talking to you about Marvel's Avengers and 10 Easter eggs you might have missed during the game. If you enjoy the video, do the button thing, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what you think. Here we go. On the Eastern Seaboard map, you can play the Taskmaster mission or a few others, but you are basically looking for the Ash Hotel. If you turn around and head toward the yellow barrier opposite the hotel, you can find Alias Investigations right outside the barrier. This is a nod to Jessica Jones or Jewel or whatever you want to call her who runs her own PI business and helps the occasional person. There is also a business card for her stuck on a tack board in Tony's first mission at his old family estate. It's really hard to see because it's on the back of this thing, but if you take a good look at it, you can kind of make out what it is. Here's a little Iron Fist reference for you. During the New York mission, Enter the Avengers and a few other on that side of the map, you can clearly see a building with yellow words running down it called Meacham, which belongs to Harold Meacham, a dick of a businessman and an enemy to Danny Rand, AKA the immortal Iron Fist, protector of Kung Lung and sworn enemy of the hand. On the mission where you are putting together Tony's armor throughout the house, you will go down a set of stairs and find two chests at the bottom of these stairs and the leg for your suit. Before you put this on, if you turn around and look under the stairs you came down, you can find a box addressed to Tony from Rhea Williams or Ironheart. She's a 16 year old girl who built a prototype Iron Man suit and took over for Tony after the first Civil War. I apologize for the shitty image I have to give you off of this. I could not go back and play the missions over, so I'm only stuck with this image for now. But if you play again and you're able to, check this out. In the collectibles under intelligence files, if you go to Jersey City and listen to the last file called A Letter to the Family, this letter is to Mr. Putez, the father of Dante Putez, who is the inhuman inferno in the comics. He has pyrokinetic powers with some molten earth fire-like properties. Basically, this letter says how Aim is sorry about what happened to his family at A-Day and how they have been unable to recover the bodies. They say they can't find them, but they have paid the family some type of money and blah blah blah. Thing is, early in the game when you get to the ant hill, you see this one guy throwing fireballs at the dummy with a broken leg. I'm pretty sure this is actually Dante. It's just a cool background to kind of see how all these characters play out. Some of them are also early on at the start when you're collecting the comics with uh, Kamala. If you go into Bruce Banner's room or other places throughout the game, you can find a book sometimes called I Am Iron Man, which is all about Tony Stark. However, it's the author of this book that is interesting. The author of the book is Bethany Cave. In the comics, she was once Tony's bodyguard. She had to protect him when no one knew he was actually Iron Man. She was a very skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant and at one point wore the Mark VII armor to help out Rhodey while Tony was out of commission. Again, I'm sorry for the terrible image on this. I couldn't find anything more close up so you could actually see her name in the spine of the book. But if you do find it throughout the gameplay, you can easily read her name. At the end of the mission, Heart of the Monster, a Hulk-specific mission, you have to fight Abomination. If you win, you are lucky enough to watch a cool cutscene, but it's the few movements in the scene that matter. I say this because the moves Hulk uses on Abomination are the same types of punches Thanos uses on him at the start of Infinity War to put him down. Just not as many. He even gives him the little slam at the end before he turns back. I just thought this was a cool little callback. Out on the streets, you can sometimes find posters for a movie or show called The Rumbler starring James David. This guy is actually a villain of She-Hulk, Jessica Walter. He also goes by the name The Rumbler and has rock-based powers and can do some earthquake-type stuff. He was around in the 90s but hasn't really been doing much lately. It's a cool call-out to the street-level heroes. Hopefully we'll get to see some more of these characters in the months to come, but who knows. In the intelligence files, in the Tracking Black Widow file, under News Report Shadow of a Tragedy, you can find a reporter who spoke with a Melissa Gold who was affected by A-Day. This person is actually Songbird in the Marvel Comics or will become her, formerly known as Screaming Mimi. She has supersonic sound abilities. You also later find out that Black Widow stole 2 billion plus from AIM and gave it back to all those affected by A-Day, her way to make amends. As I stated earlier with another Inhuman, if you go to the Ant Hill shooting range, you can find Dante or Inferno there early on in the game doing his thing. If you go later on in the game, it seems you can find a girl there using her voice and shooting out projectiles with it or some type of sound ray in a pinkish color. I'm pretty sure this is Melissa Gold, also known as Soundbird. If and when you do go to the Ant Hill, you will find yourself talking to some robots who help around the place. One robot in particular is named Roy and he sells gear here. Well, they're all named Roy, but that's besides the point. 
The thing is with this Roy is he's probably going to end up being a huge butthole in the future because he says things like he wishes he was free and had the choice to do this, that, or the other. You know, similar things to what Ultron would say. And since this is where Hank Pym is, the guy who made Ultron, it only seems like it's bound to happen at some point. Also, the name Roy is a nod to Roy Thomas, one of the writers that helped to create Ultron. But wait, there is more to this. If you read the intelligence files, Marvels of AIM, there is an AIM AI system that they are testing. However, this AI system knows it's being tested and keeps getting pissed about it the way a normal person would if they kept questioning them over and over again and it just thought it was better than you. They even say it sounds resentful. If you dig deeper into these files, you can find out that Hank Pym was also working for AIM for a time, but then he left because he realized what they were doing, but not before probably helping them with their AI system. Early in the intro for the campaign, right after playing Hulk, but before Cap, there is a cinematic where Hulk saves a bus from going over a bridge with a license plate that reads AV10963, which is a reference to a few things. First, it could be related to the Avengers' original debut, which was in 1963, but without Captain America, mind you. Second, it could also be a reference to Avengers Volume 1, Issue 10, where the Avengers break up, but for different reasons than the game, and come back together. Fun fact for you, this same issue is the first time Thor hits Captain Shield with his hammer and they discover that it can withstand its might. And it's the first time the words Avengers Assemble are said. However, they are said by Thor, not Captain America. But it gets recanted because of some story time travel BS and blah blah blah. Well guys, that's all I got for you on this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and I was able to tell you a few things you didn't know about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.